Ladies and gentlemen, now today I wanted to do a very different video where I talk about the current state of free-to-play mobile games and also speculate and talk about where I think this is heading. Because mobile games at the moment and the amount of money that people are spending and kind of the interest and addiction to mobile games is crazy, is absolutely insane. And if you explain what's going on in mobile games to anybody that's not playing mobile games, they're like, no way did somebody spend, you know, uh, close to $100,000 on a gifting event to be the first to like, you know, rank three, a six star champion like a year and a half ago, man. Or people are regularly spending tens of thousands of dollars on Cavalier crystals just to get these, um, the shiny new six star champions you know if if you talk about mobile gaming to anybody outside of it you you sound like a nutcase you sound actually insane but what if i told you there there is a new emerging area of gaming crypto gaming blockchain gaming where it's a hundred times more insane than what it is in mobile gaming and I, do, I don't mean that necessarily in a good way i mean that in a crazy overinflated, overhyped way that is just full of far too much money far too much speculation it's full of scams cons all sorts of shady stuff and it's it's insane man and i really want to um uh, kind of be keeping a very close eye on this area because to me it's fascinating it's really really interesting and I think over the next like few years there's going to be so many scandals there's going to be so much drama but I think amongst all of that there will be some really good games some really good projects that emerge uh, that are really cool so I'm really excited for those but right now man I look at a lot of crypto game men and I'm like what is going on this is this is ridiculous stuff to me it's like a um as a mobile gamer that plays these games, Marvel Contest, The Champion, Seven Deadly Sins, uh, you know, played uh, a bit of My Hero as well, but played so many gacha games. I've kept an eye on so many communities as well, and I see how people, like, behave, they spend, they get addicted, they get hooked in. Um, so, yeah, the current state uh, of mobile gaming is is insane. You know, if you, you, you take a step back from it all and you try to explain it to, you know, your average person on the street that doesn't play mobile games, they're like that. This is, this is crazy, man. This is just taking the piss um but one big problem i think that mobile games have currently in games in general is there's far too many middlemen in the process of the player and developer relation so let's say for mobile games, you know, you've got the two big titans. You've got the Apple Store, you've got Google Play as well. And Apple is absolutely notorious, man. Like any transaction by the um the Apple Store or on an iPhone, I think they take uh, very close to, if not 30% of that. So let's say you spend $100 gambling on uh, Aegon Crystals in Marvel Contest the Champions, Apple instantly get like 30% of that revenue. So $30 out of that. And then also kind of down the chain of like paying like the Marvel license, all the middlemen in like uh, game development studios, all the marketing and stuff, like a very, very small portion of that actually reaches the people that develop and work on this game you know it's a big thing in the um the gaming industry that the developers themselves are heavily underpaid despite the fact that these games are just making you know at least on paper uh just ridiculous ridiculous amounts of money so that's kind of like a big problem is that there's far too many middlemen in gaming currently that actually aren't providing like really any level of value to the actual like player of the game and because of that the developers are not getting enough money to actually make a lot of meaningful content and this is more so present in games like um uh, what is it seven deadly sins and my hero academia the strongest hero but i think you see it with like every single mobile game you see that they're making like tens of millions of dollars every single month but every single month you gotta sit back and ask you know are you really getting like actually tens of millions of dollars of content in these games every single month and i think the answer to that is is very far from it i think marvel contest champions again they put a good amount back into their game but the bigger problem is that the there's just so many middlemen currently in the process of gaming and that's really like sucking out the potential to chuck massive funding right into the pockets of developers so that they can like rapidly expand their teams and make these um 
amazing games that we all want to see moving forward. And also, th this isn't like so much of an issue right now, but it's an alternate way to like think about stuff, is that, for example, in Marvel Contest of Champions, I got the six star rank three Aegon right. Amazing, super hyped character. Everybody and their mum wants a six star rank three Aegon. But at any point in time, if Kabam wanted to, and 100%, I don't believe that they'd ever want to... Um, uh, do this, but they could go onto my account and they could delete that Aegon. I don't, I don't own that Aegon. That Aegon is is not mine at the end of the day. I can't send it to a friend, say if I'm quitting the game, and my mate Larry, you know, really wants Aegon. I can't be like, oh, here you go, mate. Have, have an Aegon. Uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just not something you can do because at the end of the day, uh, Kabam and Marvel Contest the Champions and these games, they're, they're centralized. They own all of the characters, all of the assets, all of your currency that you put into the game is solely in the um uh, the pockets and holdings uh, of Kabam. And to a certain extent, that is, that is you know, it has its advantages as well. You you trust Kabam. You know that they're not going to go onto your account, like nuke all your units, delete all your champions overnight, and just when you log into the game, it's going to be like a massive LOL, we got your message with a smiley face. So there's like a sense of security in that, that you trust the company. But a very different emerging way on the... um. Uh, the blockchain space with crypto gaming is that you actually, you know, theoretically, let's assume Marvel Contest of Champions was a game on the blockchain. You would own all of these characters as non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and you would be able to trade them on a marketplace within the game, like an auction house, for example, when you didn't have the use for them. And let's say, like, every time one of these was traded, uh, Kabam got a percentage of the transaction as tax. Let's say, you know, I sell my Aegon to uh, my friend Larry for uh, $1,000. Uh, and let's say the auction house had a 10% transaction tax. Kabam would pocket, uh, you know, $100 of that transaction, just, you know, theoretically speaking there. So that's kind of the difference with blockchain gaming is that in the future, uh, games developed on the blockchain, you can actually own your assets and that's a bit of a scary thing as well because you know you could um uh, potentially get scammed you could uh you know if you are trading these assets outside of the confines of safe structures kind of built into these games uh you could lose them as well so it's kind of like the thing of having pokemon cards for example is that uh you know it's uh it's great to have pokemon cards you got shiny charizard but you could lose that you know somebody could potentially steal it if there's some sort of vulnerability in the systems that are being built um but also it gives you the opportunity to um own that, trade it, and have that additional layer of value. Not only is it an amazing character that you can use to get through stuff, but if at any point in the future you wanted to trade that way, for example, uh, you potentially could there. So that's kind of like the uh, the fundamental difference between how games are run now and how they could potentially be run in the future, and how some games are being built in the crypto and blockchain space, just to give you a bit of an idea. So let's have a look at a couple of projects uh, right now, and this stuff is going to... Uh, it's going to blow your mind, in my opinion. So I had a look at this game, Alluvium. So I was looking up, um, you know, exciting upcoming crypto games the other week. And I found this one. Um, and a lot of you on this channel are going to remember Marvel Realm of Champions, right? It started off this big cinematic trailer. You know, this cool website, everything looked amazing. But the gameplay came out and it was, it was terrible. It was really underwhelming. Just like very, very bad for a game. So this is a game called Alluvium. And this one is currently valued total fully diluted market cap of just over $1.1 billion. $1.1 billion. Absolutely crazy. Beyond insane. This is, um, I think, kind of the equivalent value, if not like a little bit more, uh, the Marvel Contest of Champions on its lifetime. And you're saying, see, and is this game, uh, this looks like a pretty cool image, man. Is this game like actually released yet? Is it in circulation? Um, you know, wh what's the gameplay? And literally the only gameplay that they've shown is is this it's basically like uh i i think a turn-based arena fighter game uh with really good graphics that is that is essentially it we got like this gameplay thing i think there's like a small um uh what is it promotional thing on twitter as well it's built on unreal engine and again uh what is it visually the game looks good i mean there are there are some great graphics there's some good models but 1.1 billion 
this game doesn't even have like full gameplay out yet. This is like roughly, I think, what the game um like looks like in terms of the combat. Again, I'm not too sure exactly if it's a turn-based game. There are very, very little details on exactly like what this game is all about. Um, but you essentially, you know, collect the characters as NFTs. So you have these cards and you put them down uh, and you can trade the cards, you can earn the cards in game and they'll have like a value on the um, uh, the auction house or like trading systems within the game. Uh, but this this is it, This this is the gameplay. Uh, and this is all of the stuff shown for a project that is currently valued at a fully diluted market cap of 1.1 billion, which to me is Marvel Realm of Champions. It's absolutely insane. It's not a fully proven product, but it, it could be amazing. Again, I, I don't know what the finished project is going to look like, but the fact that this has such a high evaluation is very... um reminiscent of the rest of the cryptocurrency market because there's so much overinflated stuff that has crazy multi-billion dollar valuations that isn't actually like a proven product or service yet it's just stuff that has been initially made on promises and cryptocurrency is a massive speculative market and my firm belief if you are interested or looking in cryptocurrency the biggest piece of advice i can give you is do not invest in anything for like two to three months Months. Do your research, test out various systems, make sure uh, you're fully aware of everything because there, there are so many like Ponzi schemes out there and so much stuff that is just like so ridiculously overvalued that if the market steers in one direction, it could all come crashing down and you could lose your money very, very quickly. So as somebody that's been doing a lot of research, a bit of investing and looking into cryptocurrency like pretty much constantly for the last five months, man, I cannot express enough. And I, I didn't have this expressed because there are so many people that will shill everything to the the moon on YouTube, but be very, very careful. So just, you know, keep that in mind, not financial advice, but be very, very careful investing in anything. But again, some of these games are going to follow a free to play structure where you can go in as a free player. Uh, you can uh, progress in the game, earn some of this stuff, and and sell it. You know, there are games going on at the moment where they have this play-to-earn model where you can download these free-to-play games or play them uh, and make some money. And some of them at the moment are a bit profitable. But again, it's it's what is what is the point uh, where this stuff either explodes even more or collapses? What is the actual value of these games? And that's something I'm very keen to explore on the second channel. And I want to look at all of these projects they're building on the um uh, the blockchain um because i think it's a very exciting space moving forward but at the same time i think there's going to be a lot of drama i think there are going to be controversy there are going to be players like getting scammed there's going to be all sorts of like crazy stuff going on every like worst case scenario you can think of is probably going to happen 10 times throughout the course of this um uh, growing industry at least is what I'm <laughs> I'm preparing for uh, but I'm also like very interested to follow like all of the drama and crazy stuff that's going to happen there's also like on the flip side going to be some very exciting stuff that happens like some of these games are going to launch you know maybe like massively undervalued ones that have like flown under the radar are going to explode and you know early players that kind of farmed out and got some of the best characters and got really lucky are going to be able to sell certain NFTs and certain characters for thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on the hype and scale of the game so i think it's um a crazy space honestly absolutely insane uh but what if i told you this is just the beginning this is literally just the beginning you you look at this man you think this this marvel realm of champions 2.0 you know they got a nice cinematic trailer a few little cinematics here not really explaining the core of the gameplay or showing too much about exactly how these systems function it has a 1.1 billion fully diluted market cap insanity but what if i told you there's a project out right now which is uh has been seen a lot of a lot of crazy movement in the last um uh, what is it? We can, I, I really do not suggest, uh, what is it, YOLOing any money into any of these projects or anything. I, I think, like, keep an eye on the whole cycle of this stuff moving forward because it's very, very interesting. And we're going to be doing, again, a lot of analysis, a lot of breakdown, uh, a lot of talking ab about this stuff on the uh, the new crypto gaming channel. But this is uh, a game called Axie Infinity. What a name, man. Axie Infinity. Let's go. The current market cap. Fully diluted. 
six, almost six billion dollars. It's 5.9 billion as of today. A little bit earlier this week, it was over six billion dollars. Six billion. It has had a 21% price crash in the last 24 hours because Bitcoin's been going down. The whole market's been going down. But that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So you're thinking Axie Infinity. This must be the the Fortnite, the, the most crazy, ridiculous game we have ever seen in the history of ever. Like this, this must be mind blowing, man. You must look at this game and think, wow, this is going to change my life. And I'll show you a, a screenshot of this game right now. This is the, the game that is valued currently at $6 billion. Apparently, it's quite a good game. In all fairness, that's what I hear. I think the developers have been working on it for, um, uh, I think, about four years now. And I'm not, like, massively stuck into this game. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm curious, actually. I think I might do, like, a, a video on the second channel exploring this game, seeing what it's all about. But the fact, like, look, just, like, looking at this game, not knowing anything as a complete outsider, looking at this and seeing, like, fully diluted market cap is $6 billion. And that, you know, over the history, I think is about, like, at least four to five times the overall, like, almost seven-year value of Marvel Contest of Champions. Is, is that not the most, like, ridiculous, crazy thing you've ever seen? And you thought, you were, you, at the start of this video, you were like, oh, see, in mo mobile games is crazy, man. You know, people are dragging tens of thousands of dollars into, you know, Marvel Contest of Champions. Six billion, mate. Six billion dollars. It's absolutely ridiculous. So this is why I do think currently you know we're in this in this ball running crypto where stuff is just being like massively pumped up and a lot of people are speculating around um uh, games and stuff that has you know had an incredibly successful use case and from what i've heard about this game again it's been doing a lot right uh but i, I don't know like too much about it as well but just as a cynical outsider looking at this so that's why i'm so keen to kind of get stuck into these games and explore like you know what are they all really about like are these games actually worth the money are they gonna like be out for a little bit and like come crashing down is stuff gonna like pump up like crazy it's just this crazy world of just blockchain gaming that is so much more ridiculous in every single way than free-to-play mobile games so yeah honestly man i can't even express like looking at these numbers these figures the stats how crazy all of this stuff is to me it's absolutely wild but i feel like blockchain gaming is not even close to getting started and i feel like in about 10 15 years time it's going to be a really really big thing even like two to four years again there could be a huge scene that erupts and merges um but it's just getting started man and it's the wild west of gaming and I find it so fascinating, so interesting, all of the stuff that's going on. And I do think, again, if you're very interested in drama, controversy, scams, like just massive moves and all sorts of insane stuff happening, people getting wrecked, people getting like super lucky and just making crazy gains as well. I just want to be there to like observe, commentate, like give my opinion on certain games, like how they play uh, and kind of look at any interesting projects that are emerging and kind of discuss the... Um, uh, the viability of certain stuff moving forward. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a wild ride, man. So that is, that's what's happening, man. We've got the, uh, the third channel now. Uh, CN Crypto Gaming. So we are going to have a look at these games. We are going to strap on the roller coaster. This is going to be a mental, mental ride. And thousands of people are going to get absolutely wrecked. Where is blockchain gaming going to go? Is it going to erupt into kind of the next big thing? Are we going to see massive brands kind of move over to the blockchain and start building games on that? Because literally, you know, billions of dollars. If this game can raise like $6 billion, dude, imagine what like a Marvel blockchain game could do or like a very popular anime ip like seven deadly sins or dragon ball or demon slayer imagine if you got the right blockchain based game and the right economic model to actually um uh, fuel decent amounts of money to the developers and not 
constantly hand it to these middlemen. So I, I think, honestly, is the Wild West of gaming moving forward. And if you do want to follow me on the journey going down very, very, very deep down the rabbit hole, again, please subscribe to the second channel. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've waffled on far too much today. If you did enjoy today's video, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you.